AMD Ryzen CPUs are some of the most illustrious CPUs on the market, especially in the used sector where you can get something like a 5800X on eBay for $300 or less. But these CPUs have a problem, and that's their fragility. Ryzen CPUs from Zen 3 all the way downward have something called a PGA socket or a pin grid array. This means on the bottom of the CPU, there's a bunch of golden little pins that allow you to use the CPU. Again, the problem with this C the CPU is the fragility. These pins are very bendable and breakable. In the case of bending, you can easily take something like a, a little screwdriver and bend the pins back into place. But in terms of breaking the pins, that becomes an issue. Now, there's usually two ways of fixing this. The first way is soldering the pins back in, onto the CPU, but this is time consuming, tedious, and even you can break your CPU if you're not careful enough. Now, the second way is a bit of a secret. Now, I would like to turn, take your attention towards this system right here. This system has a 3800X and that CPU is missing a pin, yet the system seems fine. All of its functions works properly. So, well, how did I do it? Well, let's take the system apart and let me show you how I fix this CPU. Okay, so now that we have the system uh, down on its side, we always, 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 safe practice, go to the back end of the computer and turn off the power supply. Now, I could turn off from the OS, but I don't really care about the drive in here, so I don't really care about it corrupting or anything. So flip the power supply, and you can see this turns off. Pull out the power supply cord. And now we should be good and ready to go to be able to disassemble the computer. Now, the main part that we will be looking at today is the CPU under this fan right here. So let me get this closer to you so you can have a good close look at that. So you can't really see what's going on down here in terms of how I'm able to disassemble this, but all you got to do to be able to take out the fan or, you know, disassemble something like this is just take out the little cord that goes to its corresponding key uh, connector and then just flip the little thing that is latched onto it. Now this part might take a long time because of how fickle they are. Ah, you might be lucky today. I love, I will say, I love the stock coolers on these systems, but they are very, 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 very fickle to be able to get off. So let's, there we go. Okay, so you see, it has all the thermal paste that it would need. So now let's take a look at the CPU. Unlatch that right there. And let's carefully take it off. I think that should be good enough. You won't be able to see it all too well, but that pin right there where the index finger is, is missing. There is no pin right there. So that pin specifically is meant for one of the channels on the motherboard. So there's usually a couple pins that deal with the RAM on these CPUs that deal with uh, connecting to the RAM itself. And this one is for the first two slots on the motherboard. I do believe I might not be correct. Now, when it comes to actually solving and fixing this CPU or CPUs like it, what you really want to do is you want to look at a diagram of the pin layout for these CPUs. Usually online, you should be able to find what each pin corresponds to. Now, that specific pin, again, deals with the RAM for this system. And without that pin, you'll be missing some of the slots on your motherboard. And for something like Ryzen, that is very important. You need that uh, speed and you need those channels because of the infinity cache. So something like that is very, very important. Now, this solution does not work for pins that are for, say, power. You could make it work, but with how I specifically did it, I would not suggest doing it. So let me give you a little second. Okay, so now to be able to actually fix the CPU, I got something called a SATA cable. Now these things have little wires inside of the, the cable itself that we're going to be ripping apart and taking and using for the CPU. Now I don't necessarily have to uh, take the wiring within this and use it in this CPU. I'm just using it and showing you just for demonstration's sake. So usually what you want is you know a wire cutter, but not everyone has a wire cutter, so I'm just using something like a, a regular old scissor. What you want to do is take it and cut it diagonally. The reason for this is because what we want is the wiring inside of the connector itself. 
So what we do, we want to cut across and open it up. Now, this does this will take a while. So you will have to be very patient with how long this takes. But what you want to do is either with the scissors or something along the lines, you want to go downward onto the the wire or the cable itself. So let me do this because uh, this is going to be hard to show on camera. Now I also have something like, you know, <laughs> nail clippers because, hey, whatever you can use around the house, use it, right? Not everyone is going to have uh, equipment. So I'm going to try and slowly dig in to the wiring itself or the housing or the, the, the stuff that basically encompasses it. Now just take your time. This is, this is a, a tedious and long process, so don't worry about not getting it right or messing something up. You have all this wiring to work with. Try and make you, use of it as much as you can. Now, what I usually do, I try and cut diagonally. As I've said before, that kind of helps the process of extracting the wires. But eventually, what you want to do is drip the rubber part so you have access to the metal wiring inside. Okay, there we go. So I made a little nick in it that goes downward. So I'm gonna try and take it and peel downward so that I can expose the wire. So now that we have it exposed, right? Well, you'll see usually within a SATA, you'll see a little kind of foil and white surrounding the wiring itself. You want to get that out and you want the little teeny tiny silver or copper or any coloring of kind of a metallic look to it. You want to get that and extract it. Okay. Now I've extracted a piece of wiring from the system itself. Now this, quite frankly, is the hardest part of the mod or the fix. Now you'll see on my hand or on the tweezer itself is this wire. For this, you will need to cut this wire down to size and fit it into the socket itself. Physically place it. Now this is way too long for our needs because what you want to do is you want to place this into the socket and you want this pin to basically smack into uh, where the pin was broken off. So place it into the socket and you want this to make contact with the broken socket pin. This is going to be the hardest part. Let me let me say this. You want to be as precise as possible. Get some tweezers. Be very, 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 very slow. And I cannot preface this enough. This is very hard. This would make any surgeon uh, fucking literally even squeamish at how hard this can be. So let me show you physically what I am doing. Okay. Now that you have a good look, what we realistically want to do is... Take our wiring and cut it down. I would say cut it a little longer than the pins already shown on the CPU. The reason for this is because it has to make contact inside the socket and the CPU pins already. So let me cut this down to size so you can get an accurate representation of what you realistically need. And be known, uh, let it be known that once you make it shorter, it becomes infinitely harder. Trust me, it's not something that's easy, but it's a lot easier than soldering. And if you have the patience and the know how, you can do it. So you can't even see that, ca that little piece of wiring anymore, it's still on there. That's it right there. That's how small you realistically want it to be. So what you want to do is you got to find the specific hole that is inside the socket. This, this is where you want to basically plug the, the, the wiring into. So again, find where your specific pin is, your specific broken pin. Now remember, these Ryzen CPUs are oriented in a certain way to be able to put be put into the socket itself. So what you want, usually want to do, you want to find the gold triangle or you find the logo, the AMD logo, right? And 
when you're facing it on my uh, on how I'm facing it, you want the logo facing towards the back exhaust fan. So once you find that, find your corresponding socket hole and gently place it into there. You will get a lot of issues with it falling out, it going sideways into the socket. Don't worry, don't fret, just get some more cabling or take it as long and as slow as you need to have it. Okay, editing Sivy uh, over here. Uh, one extra piece of advice that I can give is that say you have it already in the socket, the little wire in the corresponding socket hole, and it's too long. What you can do is while it's in the socket, you can take something like a wire cutter, a scissor, or even a nail clipper and clip off the excess wire. That's still, you need to get into the hole, but instead of taking the wire out of the socket again and then clipping it and then trying it again, you can maybe even have it as long as possible, place it into the socket and then cut off as much as you want or need. So once you take it into and place it into the socket, make sure your tension arm is all the way up, place it into the socket, make sure it's making good contact. And sometimes you will feel some resistance once you place the wire into the socket, just press it in there. That pin in the socket should bend and should give, and it should be making contact with the broken pin socket. So let's retention it, lock it into place, and put your CPU cooler back on. Remember, this CPU specifically was missing the pin for to be able to communicate with its uh, RAM socket. So it was this socket right here that was basically not working, not uh, responding, and you could only be able to put, uh, populate the RAM uh, slots here and here, which isn't again good for Ryzen CPU. So I'll meet you in the BIOS and I'll, you, and I'll show you that everything is working accordingly. All right, so now we have our system all set back, uh, back to its original state. Um, we plugged in every all of our cables. Make sure when you plug it back in, uh, just flip the switch on the power supply back to the I uh, little logo. And of course, press power button. And as you can see, everything lights up, it starts up. Now here is the moment of truth. Let's see if it gets into the BIOS and our RAM is detected. Both sticks, mind you, not just the one. This is the most fun part pressing the delete key. In fact, this is why women like me. Okay. Okay, so we are in the BIOS. And as you can clearly see, we have both sticks that are showing one eight gigabyte of DDR4 and another, another eight gigabyte of DDR4. Now let, let it be known that this is usually only if one of the pins for say, uh, I don't know, the USB or IO or the RAM slicks, something that just needs to send data and not necessarily something that requires power. The SATA pins in the SATA uh, wiring, the wiring within the SATA isn't something I would use to be able to send power, like lots and lots of powers, a lot of amps, a lot of voltages. So let it be known, if it is a pin that is meant for something like power, it is not advisable to use a SATA wire. Use something a little bit more uh, thick and gauge, but for anything that just needs something to send data across, this is probably your best bet in terms of to be able to repair your Ryzen CPU. Okay, so I hope everything was informative um, in terms of this video. If you have any questions in terms of fixing your Ryzen CPU, just send them in the comments down below. Uh, give a like and subscribe if you liked the video. If you didn't like the video, please comment as to why you didn't. And maybe we can come to an agreement why um, you're a poopy head. <laughs> no, uh, as to why um, your, issue, your system didn't work or something like that. So thank you for watching and have a nice day.